Welcome uh, to the Open Forum. Once again, we have the privilege and the pleasure of looking together in this wonderful book, the Bible. And uh, we, we are truly thankful to our God that we live in a country where we can do this so openly. We don't have to worry a second as we talk together right out in public, as public as possible, about the, everything and anything in the Bible. Uh, that is the mercy of God. Now, shall we take our first call tonight, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello? Yes, welcome to Open Forum. <clears throat> yes, uh, Brother Camping? Yes. Uh, I was wondering about, how about devout Catholics and or Protestants who have been devout for the, maybe a period of like 50 years? Should they also leave the churches? Well, the question is not whether we are devout. If you would go into a Hindu temple or a uh, Mohammedan mosque or in a... Uh, uh, any any religion uh, anywhere you will find very devout people, lovely people, wonderful people, but that is the not not the test of truth. The test of truth is how do they relate to the Bible because the Bible is the only book that God has given telling us what his plan is for us and how we are to conduct ourselves in relationship to God. And so the question is, when we talk about someone who has had the Bible, as uh, those who are identified with Christ, identify themselves with Christ in some way, in some denominations, some churches, some denominations have been around for a long, long time. Uh, and some are much more recent. But nevertheless, the qu issue is not how devout they are, but the question is, are they listening to the whole Bible? Or are they only listening to certain verses that they think they have come to understand and then following the theological conclusions that they're theologians have come to based on those verses but most frequently not realizing that the, they cannot really understand any verse in the Bible till they have checked it out with the whole Bible and when we begin to look at what the churches have held in the past right up to the present day we find that in every denomination there are many, many errors because they have not been, uh, they have not done their homework in checking the, their conclusions or their theological conclusions against the whole Bible. So that's really where the test is. Not, not uh, if they're devout. There, there are very devout people in any kind of a Christian religion and in any kind of a religion, wherever it might be. If, if, what, at what point were they supposed to leave the church? Well, the, according to what we finally have understood as God has opened our eyes to a, a, a clearer and clearer understanding of these days and of the end of the world, we know that 1988 was the year when God was finished using it, both the nation of Israel and the churches to represent the kingdom of God in any way. Now, we didn't know that in 1988 necessarily, but in the years that followed, as one year followed another, and we saw the decay in the churches, we saw so many things that just didn't make sense. Uh, we finally, and, and as we continued to search the Bible, it finally the truth began to dawn on us, on many of us, that indeed uh, we cannot be in the church anymore because Satan has been appointed by God to rule there beginning in 1988. 
and devout old women and men who had been in the church, they should have known this, and because they didn't know that, then they must be damned. Is that well, correct? We don't know. You say, you can easily say they should have known, but you have to remember, it's not only uh, that, that mankind has not been as diligent maybe as they should have been but also it requires that God opens a person's spiritual eyes and why God opened some of our eyes many of us who have been uh, searching the whole Bible and we have come to truth uh, and not many of the uh, theologians and the preachers and so on of prestigious churches of one kind or another that's a, that's God's business uh, he is the one who has to open our eyes we simply have to approach the Bible very humbly oh Lord I don't know anything please teach me please teach me from the word of God and we don't come with any uh, preconceived ideas or any authority of our own of any kind and uh, and then uh, uh, hopefully God will begin to open our eyes but thank you for calling and sharing and uh, shall we take our next call please welcome to open forum Mr. Camping Mr. Yes. Camping Mr. Camping yes go ahead with your call could you read Galatians, the third chapter, the second verse? Galatians chapter 3, verse 2. There we read Galatians chapter 3, verse 2. This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Now, what is your question? That it's the hearing of faith that brings the Holy Spirit into our life? The hearing of faith is Christ. Uh, uh, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. We read in Romans 10, verse 17, and faith is the Lord Jesus Christ, because faith is a work that we do, uh, that is done, and uh, the Bible teaches that, that uh, speaks about the work of faith, and Christ is the only one who has done the work to save us. So this is effectively saying, Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, that is, by, by trying to keep all the commandments and trying to uh, be as good as possible. Is that what cause you to come to salvation because to receive the spirit means to become saved or by the hearing of faith that is the hearing of what Christ has done for us uh, the uh, that he has done all the work and and uh, we uh, uh, we uh, absolutely could not have made any contribution toward our becoming saved because that to receive the Spirit is a figure here of becoming a child of God. Because when we, when God gives us our eternal soul, uh, that is that moment when we become saved, and at that moment the Holy Spirit, or God Himself, uh, indwells us forevermore. If first of all in our soul, and then at the end of the world when He at the end of, the, of God's gospel plan, when he completes our salvation, he'll also indwell us in our new resurrected, our new eternal resurrected spiritual bodies. Then there's nothing we can do uh, to uh, add to Calvary or nothing we can do to take away from it. Is that true? You, you see, uh, there's nothing we can do. And th think of it in another way. We have learned now. We didn't know that before 1988. And, uh, and we've only known this in the last few years, as a matter of fact, that all of the work of making payment for our sins was completed by Christ before he ever created the world. 
And of course, none of us existed then. Uh, God knew who we were uh, because he knows the end from the beginning. He knew every sin we would commit even though we hadn't committed them yet. And they were laid upon Christ. And and therefore, because he had become sin for us before the foundation of the world, before he ever created the world, he had to die and, and was killed by God and buried and raised again. All of that happened before the foundation of the world. So, now we see why God says we can't do anything. There's no way that we could have made a contribution to our salvation if it was all taken care of before Christ ever created the the world. Uh, And when all he has to do, uh, when we come into existence at any time, In our life, uh, chosen by him, he just has to apply the word of God to our our sinful souls and give us a new soul because all the work to, to allow that had all been done before he ever created the world. And thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Are you going to first time caller? Yes, go yeah, ahead with your call. Uh, where am I calling from? You're on the air, guy. What is your question? Yeah, so I'm calling about the, about the, about the judgment day on May 21st, 2011. So how, we, how do we know that for sure? How do we know for sure that May 21, 2011 is... Uh, judgment day we know that by very carefully working through the Bible uh, and following all the rules of the Bible and coming to that date and then uh, receiving from God uh, again through the Bible proves that that date is very very accurate Uh, For example, 2011 is exactly 7,000 years after the flood uh, that occurred in 4990 B.C. And uh, that uh, that is is told us that it would be that period of time when we uh, read 2 Peter chapter 3 and compare it with what we read in Genesis chapter 7. And uh, it, we, when we put all those verses together, we find, yes, there are 7,000 years. And indeed, uh, uh, all the work that had been done in working out the timeline of history, of the unfolding of God's gospel pro- program, did show years ago already that the flood was 4990 B.C. And it also showed in the last few years that uh, May 20, that 2011 was the year of uh, the uh, Judgment Day, and they're exactly 7,000 years apart. And that's oh, one of the proofs. Hello? Yes. But, but, uh, May 21st, 2011, it, it, like at any time, it's all the same time, right? That day, right? Uh, well, yeah, you, the fact is. Uh, nobody can understand unless God opens their spiritual eyes. We have all this information that I'm summarizing here is written. Uh, we've written it out uh, and is available free of charge to anyone who wants to take the time to, to read uh, and shows f- where in the Bible we have found this piece of information or that piece of information and uh, and so that you can check it out for yourself. But uh, the Bible also teaches that just because we find it in the Bible doesn't mean that we'll understand it. God has to give us understanding. God gives us a very definite uh, 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 evidence of that truth that God has to open our spiritual eyes but it is there for anybody to look at in so far as they they would like to see once where we uh, did come to this these conclusions from the Bible 
Okay. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Yes, good evening, Brother Camping. Yes. Okay, um, I became saved in 1992, uh, or thereabouts. You know, God was working in my heart by uh, just myself in the Bible, no family radio, uh, though I started listening soon thereafter, no pastors, no church, uh, just being taught the Spirit of God. And uh, there's something that I thought the Bible was teaching, and as I started going to church, pastors would tell me, no, that's uh, impossible, so I want to ask you the question. Uh, I do want to offer a word of encouragement to anybody going through a divorce that uh, the, reading the Bible actually helped me uh, repair my marriage and, and get back with my wife. So uh, I highly recommend anybody going through any difficulties uh, seek the Word of God. But, Brother Camping, um, uh, in the summer I called you just this past summer about uh, why did Satan, uh, why was he allowed in the garden, and, uh, you know, how about the angels that fell? and. You had told me that was a mystery of God, and then, very interestingly, in the last few weeks, you've been teaching on that very subject. And I want to make a, a theory, I guess it is, but I think the Bible teaches it, that we, all mankind that are on this earth, are the angels that have fallen from grace, and that God is... Uh, and that would explain a lot of things in the Bible about, say, like, why is the... No, the, excuse the me. Uh, excuse me. The Bible teaches that... Mankind was created in the image of God. And uh, the Bible also teaches that uh, angels were created as ministering spirits. Uh, uh, and, but they were not created in the image of God. They are, uh, the Bible says very clearly that they are not sons of God as mankind are, were the son of God in, in the sense that we were all created uh, in, uh, we all began in Adam and Eve and they were created in the, in the likeness and in the, uh, 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 in the image of God. We read that in Genesis chapter 1. And uh, the angels are an entirely different creation. The Bible is very clear about that. You were, you were telling about how uh, God's salvation plan, or judgment plan rather, for the angels is different from ours, that it, the Bible doesn't speak about that. And Brother Camping, like, the yeah, more I read the Bible, I don't feel Excuse me, I'm... excuse me, the Bible does. The Bible speaks about all of the fallen angels, and it's a mystery to us uh, why they, uh, uh, many of them fell right at the uh, early on after creation, along with their leader, uh, who is Satan, and uh, no more fell after that. We don't find any record anywhere in the Bible, but these fallen angels uh, will all be destroyed in the uh, day, uh, in the day of judgment or in the lake of fire which God typifies the day of judgment because God is a consuming fire and so it's uh, uh, the the bible the bible is pretty clear that the angels are are completely separated from mankind and uh, uh, they Christ did not come to make pay for the sins of angels he came to pay for the sins uh, he he provided payment for the sins of fallen mankind, and uh, uh, I I agree with you that if you only read some verses in the Bible, you co could get that kind of a conclusion you're coming to. But when you uh, test it against everything in the Bible, it won't it won't stand. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello, Brother Camping? Yes. Hi. I have a quick question about um, children or people in general with disabilities. I have a disabled son, and I always like to pray for him to be saved. With over 7 billion people in the world, and only 200 million will be saved, is there a special exception for children with disabilities? Well, the fact is that God uh, tells us in the book of Exodus that God uh, 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 creates man the way they are. Now, uh, some, some babies are born blind. 
uh, and they remain blind all, all their life as they grow into an adult. So they're always disabled. Uh, others are born with uh, uh, other difficulties, and God takes full responsibility for that. Uh, it is His. It is His uh, pleasure. Let me see uh, if I can find that verse that I'm thinking about. I think it's in Exodus chapter four. I think. Let me turn that to that. Uh, the uh, uh, we read in Exodus chapter four. Uh, um, uh, Moses is is protesting uh, that he is not capable of leading uh, Israel out of Egypt and God is just speaking to him about the fact that that is an assignment God has given to him. And we read in verse 10 in Exodus chapter 4, Moses said unto Jehovah, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. Uh, in other words, he was trying to dodge the responsibility that God was laying on him. And then God answered in verse 11, And Jehovah said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb that is, so that they cannot speak at all, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind. Have not I Jehovah? In other words, uh, God is, uh, uh, God can use us. Here he's using Moses, who has a speech defect of some kind, and, uh, and we, we can never alibi and say, Oh Lord, I'm not, I'm not useful at all. Even in our disability, okay, God made me that way. Now Lord, how can I use my life uh, to be, uh, uh, to be, uh, 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 showing the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ? And, uh, and, and in this answer, God is showing us, uh, that when, uh, uh, babies are born the way they are. While there may be, we we know of uh, of uh, maybe the mother had been on drugs or something, but God allowed all of that and allowed that baby to be born that way. Uh, one would think, well, a merciful God certainly would not want that baby to uh, carry defects because of the sins of the mother. But that's all God's business. That's not our business. God is in charge of, of all of that. Thank you so much. Thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hi, Mr. Campy. Yes. Hi. Um, well, I first want to say that I thank God for Family Radio. I was asked to leave the church uh, some two to three years ago, and at the time I was wondering if I was the only lonely person in that situation. And when I came across Family Radio one day, it just, it just filled in all the missing pieces and the questions I had, and I've, and I've learned so much more after that. So I really thank Family Radio. Anyway, to get to my question, I called about four months ago questioning the, um, the, why the change from the Saturday Sabbath to the Sunday. Um, and I understood, I understand that you know, the Saturday Sabbath was pointing to the fact that we we can do no work at all to get ourselves saved. But I was still questioning why the change. And after, you know, begging God to please open my spiritual eyes, because I didn't get the full understanding of it, I still wondered, but why the change? Well, you Here's see, my... you're asking a good question. You know, in the Old Testament, God gave a lot of uh, of, uh, of ceremonial laws that uh, emphasized that various aspects of God's salvation plan. For example, uh, every day there were uh, there were lambs that were slaughtered and uh, offered as a sacrifice in the temple. 
We don't do that once Christ went to the cross. We don't do that anymore. It was a pointing to how Christ uh, died to pay for our sins. He was the lamb that was slaughtered, the, uh, spiritually speaking. Uh, in the Old Testament, there were many of these kind of ceremonial laws. Uh, or, for example, if you had a garment, a coat, uh, it was not to be, you were not to put in uh, cotton and also a wool uh, thread in the same garment because God was emphasizing that there are two kinds of people in the world. Uh, they are the true believers and they are those who are not the true believers. And there were a whole host of, ver of laws like that, including this most important one, that the seventh day was to be observed without any work of any kind, uh, to illustrate the fact that we're not to do any work for our salvation. Now, once Christ went to the cross, we don't keep any of those Old Testament ceremonial laws. We're not a single one of them, because they uh, they had done their work in preparing us for the for the time when Christ would come and, and be the ultimate demonstration of every aspect of God's salvation plan. It would be way, way more than all these others could, could uh, all together, could help us to understand. But, uh, uh, but the uh, fact is, God still, in his love for mankind, prepared one day... Uh, for a day where people uh, would not uh, would would not have to work, you know, we have a responsibility as as parents to provide for our family. And here's a family that's very poor. There's uh, hard to get, have enough food to eat. And uh, do I work seven days a week? Oh, long hours from sunup to sundown. Is that my responsibility? And God says, no. You have to have one day out of the week that I want you to... Uh, you can focus all together on spiritual things. And that will be the first day of the of the week, the... Uh, the Sunday Sabbath, but it has no sign of it. It's not pointing to something as the seventh day Sabbath did. We have to break. We're continuing our open forum program, and shall we take our next call with caller with their question? Welcome to open forum. Hello, Mr. Pumpkin. Um, Revelation 13, verse 8. Revelation 13, verse 8. Let's yes. look at that. Revelation 13, verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of the life of the Lamb slain, uh, uh, slain uh, 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 from the foundation of the world. It's talking about... Uh, about this uh, uh, beast that comes out of the sea and it was given unto him to make war the verse 7 says it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and uh, power was given him over all kingdoms and tongues and nations now what is your question okay I noticed that um, the scripture says from the foundation of the earth. But you have put in your word just at the enchantment of Pharaoh, and you keep saying before. I'd love to ask you, would you take correction if someone is giving you correction here on Open Forum? I've noticed that you're like that Leviathan whose skin is so thick that nobody can get into you. Well, you I'm correct? sorry, what is your question? Is, are you struggling with the world uh, that he is the uh, the lamb slain from the from the foundation? Is that the word that you're concerned about? The the word from means to be away from, and it could be it could be uh, away from in either direction. But when we look uh, look at all the other information in the Bible, and there's a lot of it, uh, we find that it was uh, it was 
Well, it was before the foundation of the world. For example, in uh, Matthew chapter 25, we read in verse 34, Then shall the king say unto them, that is, they are, these are the true believers, on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of the Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Same idea. It was already uh, prepared from the foundation uh, 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 of the world. Uh, uh, although there we have the same word from. And, but on the other hand, we have other verses that, uh, uh, that uh, emphasize that, that, uh, uh, that the, the work was all done uh, like, in, like we find in, uh, in um, oh, I'm just thinking out loud here, uh, in Hebrews uh, chapter 4, where God says, in Hebrews chapter 4, uh, 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 and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. This is Hebrews 4 verse 4, and God is defining that word from. He's saying God did rest the seventh day, and that was after he had created six days. Remember Genesis chapter 2? Uh, uh, that uh, that he had uh, created six days, and then on the seventh day he rested. And here God is explaining, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. All his works had already been done. It was not after after uh, the creation that all of his work was done, but it was. Uh, it was all the creation was done, and then God rested, and and all His work included also uh, the fact that He was the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, and and He was uh, the, His work was all prepared from the foundation of the world. And I will not stop calling you until I get you. Listen, I wanted to ask you: Will you be? taking a correction here on the open forum if after I show you that there's something that you said that is incorrect. Are yeah, you willing well, to take uh, a correction? Uh, I, I am always ready to be corrected, but we have to correct correctly. Uh, you know, Again, let me give you one more uh, problem, and that is that the Bible teaches that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission, that is no forgiveness. And and uh, if if Christ had not shed His blood before He ever created the world, then there would be no possibility that Moses could have been saved, or David, or Abraham, or Isaac, or because they all came after creation. If there if there, if there was no shedding of blood, without shedding of blood, there is no. Uh, no remission, no forgiveness, and uh, that locks it all. That that you see, uh, then all these verses uh, agree with each other that Christ uh, may shed His blood before He ever created the world, so that when He wanted to save Abel, who's the first one that we know did become saved, we know yes, Christ had already shed His blood for him, and if we don't have that uh, for him, how in the world could God save him? Mr. Campton, I hear you loud and clear. Now, I noticed when you just said that, there is a verse that backs it up properly. I gave you Revelation 13, verse 8, and in Revelation 17, verse 8, it corresponds and tells exactly about that beast, which is... Uh, uh, well, now, excuse prophet. me, excuse me. We want to stick with the, the issue. The issue is you, you are trying to show from the Bible that we... That uh, that uh, God Christ did not uh, shed His blood until 33 A.D. I think that's what you're trying to say, and the fact is, then all the Old Testament believers could not have become saved. There would be that would be impossible, and and you have to you have to uh, uh, coordinate you have to uh, 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 bring all of that into the into review. Other and and all. Uh, Everything fits perfectly when we see that he completed all this work before he ever created the world. And, uh, and therefore, 
uh, he could begin saving instantly the moment mankind fell into sin. Mr. Punkin, I, I only need 30 seconds to show you how it fits perfectly based on what I'm going to say to you. There was a lamb that was slain from the foundation of the earth, but it was a right lamb that Abel had slain for the foundations of the earth weren't completed totally until after um, uh, Cain was driven out of the land of, uh, out of the, the Garden of Eden. And that is exactly where that was done. Oh, excuse me, are, are you talking from. about are you talking about the lamb, the physical, literal lamb that Abel uh, offered uh, uh, right after, uh, after, uh, 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 just before he was killed by his brother Cain? That cannot be. My, my. Uh, how was he, how was Christ introduced? Behold the Lamb of God, we read in, uh, when John the Baptist introduced him. And so that thought of that lamb being this lamb, uh, uh, that lamb could not save anyone. That was just a picture, just a portrait. And that would not go anywhere at all. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello, Mr. Camping. Yes. Uh, I was at work the other day, mm -hmm. and... Um, I was telling my friend about the love and mercy of Christ, and uh, I gave him a Bible, and uh, I was telling him some verses he should read. And then I also told him not to read First Timothy 2 and 3 and the book of Corinthians and Galatians due to um, <laughs> uh, why? things about church. And um, and we're not in the church age anymore, so I just wanted to let you know that um, well, no. your teachings have really helped no. me uh, spread the word and the gospel. No, 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 we have to be very careful here. Because God is not saving anybody in the churches anymore, they no more represent the kingdom of God. That does not mean that now there are verses in the Bible we should not read. No, we must never, never follow that kind of a path. We, the, the whole Bible is the Word of God, and it stands, and we must never, never downgrade any verse in the whole Bible. We, 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 uh, uh, we simply... And now that we have a, a additional knowledge, we have to read any verse, and and, and maybe we have to spend a lot more time trying to understand it. But the, but we must never, never, never uh, downgrade any verse in the Bible. And there are verses that are so difficult or seem to be so contrary to what we think is truth. We would like to do that, but we must never. Do that. The Word of God is God's Word, and we don't rule over God's Word ever. But thank you for calling and sharing, and uh, shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Uh, yes, good evening. Yes. Uh, Malachi chapter 4, verses 5. Malachi chapter 4. Let's verses look at like that. that. Malachi... Chapter 4, verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of Jehovah, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Now, what is your question? Well, what's the meaning? I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great Lord. Uh, I don't understand that. Well, let's go to Luke chapter 1, verse 17. Uh, we read there where uh, about the birth, uh, the, the coming birth of John the Baptist. And uh, the angel, uh, who is God himself actually in this context, is speaking to 
uh, to um, uh, uh, his father, Zechariah. And he says in verse 15, uh, for he shall be great. This is Luke chapter 1, verse 15. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, that is the Holy Spirit, even from his master's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And so in the first instance, God is definitely talking here about John the Baptist who would, because when Christ came uh, uh, to demonstrate how he made payment for our sins, that was a fantastic piece of information that God gave to the world and set the stage for sending the gospel out into the whole world. Now, in our day, God has given us additional information, but, uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, uh, again, uh, we are, uh, uh, God is preparing the world uh, for, uh, or uh, there are many people becoming saved as a consequence, and uh, and at the same time he's preparing the world for Judgment Day. Okay, well that that helps me a lot. Thank you. Sir. Thank you a lot for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Yes, Mr. Camping, Second uh, Peter chapter two, verse one. Second Peter. Second Peter chapter two, the last verse in chapter two. Second uh, Peter chapter two, verse one, and the last verse of chapter two. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And then the last verse, but it has happened unto These, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Now, what is your question? Okay, Mr. Camping, as you look at these verses, and I'm going to see how you dance around this like you normally do, but uh, bought them. It means he has paid the price for the sins of even the false teachers, Mr. Camping. How, how do you dance around that one? That uh, who who bought them? Well, uh, let me. Uh, you, uh, you may call it dancing and around, but the Bible teaches that we are to compare Scripture with Scripture. Now, in Matthew, uh, and I don't know if I can find the verse right at this moment, but in um, uh, God it says the kingdom of heaven is like a. Let me see. Is it Matthew chapter 9, maybe? Chapter 9? Um, no, I don't have it. It's, it's the kingdom of heaven is like a man who, who uh, uh, bought a, uh, found a treasure and he bought the whole field and, uh, and uh, in order to uh, secure the treasure that was hidden in that field. And that field represents the world. God, Christ, actually, in making payment for our sins, uh, actually became the ruler. uh, uh, It emphasized that he's the ruler of the whole world. And in that sense, he bought everyone. He, He had the right to rule over everybody in the whole world in order that it also he had the right to save some who are the treasure that were hid in the field. And and, uh, he did not buy the whole world to save the whole world. Uh, He bought the whole world so that out of that whole world he would have the authority, complete authority, to save those that he planned, that he wished to save. And uh, that is... uh, 
uh, that, that ties those passages together. But we know Christ did not pay for the sins of uh, most people in the world because otherwise there would be nobody in Judgment Day. And the Bible speaks uh, all over the place about all the people who will be suffering in Judgment Day who are under the wrath of God. And, uh, and we would have a terrific problem of reconciling that with the uh, fact that uh, that if Christ made payment for everybody's sin, but thank you. How do you, you. justify, Mr. Camping? First Timothy four ten. There First. are three witnesses: Peter, John, and uh, and Paul. All yeah. three of those in in Acts ten twenty eight in in uh, Rome in uh, First Timothy four ten. And in 1 John 4:14, 4, Mr. Camping, all three, that's three witnesses that are telling you that God saved the whole world. Now you are... Uh, excuse me, excuse me. Now you're getting very uh, uh, upset, but let me emphasize. If Christ saved the whole world, let me ask you this very plain question. Therefore, are you saying that nobody will be under end up under the wrath of God. Look at First Timothy. Who excuse me, excuse me. I'm asking you the question. You the question. I, 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 I want you to answer the question. Do you believe, based on First Timothy 4.10 and these other verses, do you believe that there is nobody under the wrath of God? Everybody right now is under the wrath of God. Right now we are under the wrath of God because of the false teachings. Well, excuse me. Now, wait a minute. Now, you're not answering my question. You're dodging the question. The question is, you are saying that Christ made payment for the sins of every individual, if I understand you correctly. And therefore, if he made payment for their sins, it... It has to follow, therefore, that those individuals can do not have to make payment for our sins, their sins. That's what salvation is all about. And so if you hold that position, are you telling me that there will be nobody under the wrath of God? And you can take these three verses or four verses and take, hold your position, but now I could offer you about a thousand verses, literally, uh, all through the Bible, where God is talking about those who are under the wrath of God. Where do they fit in? And you, there's no way. Uh, in, in other words, what we get, uh, what, the way we get into trouble with understanding the Bible is when we take, when we isolate uh, a verse here and a verse there and, and then build a conclusion on that, but do not harmonize that conclusion with everything else the Bible teaches that relates to the subject. And, and you can't possibly relate to all, the, 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 all these verses that talk about damnation and talk about the wrath of God and the wages of sin and judgment day and, and on and on and on with that conclusion of yours. But thank you for calling and sharing. And uh, shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello, Mr. Camping? Yes, welcome to Open Forum. Yeah, hi. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I, I, you, you know much more about the Bible than I do, but I, I just have one, one question. Um, how, how certain are you of the May 21st date? How certain are you of... Oh, I am absolute certain. It is, it is. First of all, look at all the signs that show that we're, that we have to be right at the end. The enormous wickedness in the world. The gay pride movement. The, uh, the, uh, lying and the stealing and the, and the sexual, uh, uh, the terrible sexual conduct that's going on, the, the destruction of the family, the, of the families, the, uh, the divorces and the, uh, uh, the killing of the, uh, 
uh, the unborn babies and all and sin after sin after sin. It's the world has never been as a whole world been as sinful as it is today. That's uh, and then there are many other signs that that are that point to the fact we're there as well as when we work through the arithmetic of all the uh, all of the biblical s- statements that God has made it all that God has given gigantic proofs that we're right there and so when it's just it is we without without knowing anything about time we would have to be saying as we look at the world today and the churches today and and compare that with what the bible is teaching uh, about what the way we ought to be living and and when we compare that even with how mankind lived even uh, 50 or 100 years ago uh, my my it's been a, a, we all we conclude is how can god put up with a world like this he how can the mocking and the scoffing and the scorning of God and the and the and the Bible the way this is happening? How can God put up with it? And all of that points to the fact we've got to be right near the end, and then we have the precise information coming right out of the God, Bible, May 21, and the proofs that show that that fits perfectly with with, with b- biblical truth and so it's it's it, it, anyone who's saying oh no it's not it's not not possible maybe it won't happen they're not listening they're not looking at the world they're not looking at the church honestly they are they are l- looking at some of these things with uh, with uh, blinders on they are they're uh, they're not they're not ready uh, to uh, look very clearly at what is happening. If if uh, I I'm certainly w- wouldn't say whether you're you're right or you're wrong because you know much more than I do. What I'm I'm just curious what what happens say on if if on on May 22nd the world is exactly the same. It and, will not excuse me that we don't can entertain that question because it won't be exactly the same. May twenty second will be the second day of the day of judgment and there will be no more salvation possible. All the true believers will have left this earth and are in heaven with Christ. Uh, and uh, you, you, you're asking a question that's an impossible question. It's not going to happen that way. It's going to be a second day of judgment day, uh, it, because we don't we don't argue with the Bible. Uh, we uh, we don't pretend for one second that we know more than the Bible. We have to listen to the Bible, and God has given us all of this information from the Bible. And so how would we dare to question that? Just like we wouldn't dare to question, is Christ God? Uh, We wouldn't dare to question that. Of course he's God. Did Christ uh, create the world in six days? Absolutely. Uh, Well, then we we wouldn't dare to question that. And uh, And the same thing. When God has given us all of this information, the signs and the dates and all, and they all agree together, they all harmonize perfectly together, uh, then how would we dare to question that? I certainly would not dare to do that. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hi, my name is Jeff. Hi, Mr. Camp, Camping. Yes, go ahead your your call. What is your question? My question is, um, do the people um, that are drunk drunkards and say uh, foul language like God damn it and all that stuff, will they enter into the kingdom of God? Are they, will they go to heaven? Well, no, you see, the true belief, the character of those who will go to heaven are, is that they have an intense desire to do the will of God. 
it's true they still live we still live in a body that is not it is possible to sin in but we hate sin that's our nature because of the fact that God has given us an eternal soul in which we never want to sin. And so we can't live as a drunkard. We can't live as a prostitute. We can't live as a liar. We can't live, uh, if, we, if we find that habitually we're telling lies, falsehoods, well, it just means we're not a child of God. That's not, it's not possible that we would live that way if we're a true child of God. First Lord and Savior, and I'm talking about my dad. He's an attorney, and he, he, I just explained to you what he has done in, in front of me and my sister, and um, he goes on ahead and does like this. To yeah, excuse me, you know, let me suggest something. Don't look at your father. Look in the mirror. Every one of us have to look at our own sins. But I have to pause. We're continuing with the Open Forum, and shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hi, Mr. Camping. Yes. Hi, on Judgment Day, uh, May 21, um, I can't imagine um, the, uh, the true believers just disappearing from the earth. So could they just die maybe instantly and then have the resurrection body instantly? Well, the Bible, uh, we might, it isn't a question of what we can imagine or not. Uh, the Bible says two will be in the field, one is taken, the other is left. We do read language that indicates that those who are being raptured or caught up will be seen by those who are left behind. They will see them go up, and I don't know how all that will work out, but uh, uh, it is uh, it is going to happen on May 21 that that uh, everyone that's ever become a believer, their grave will open up, or maybe all that's left there is a little dust or some ashes or a bone or maybe is there still a body there but that will be changed instantly into a glorified spiritual body and in the in the eyesight of all of those who are left behind they will see those bodies being caught up to be and all, and the true believers that are living at that time they instantly at the same moment will be changed into their glorified spiritual bodies and their bodies also will be going up now we can't imagine that there's no way that doesn't fit into anything of a, that we've ever experienced but uh, but that's what god declares and so we uh, know it's going to happen that way but thank you for calling and sharing and shall we take our next call please welcome to open forum Welcome to Open Forum. The number is 1-800-322-5385. 1-800-322-5385. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Mr. Camping? Yes. Um, I must admit, I'm a little upset because you hung up on me and um, you were going on and on and on, but it, it wasn't even the point of my call. You you didn't let me get to what I wanted to say, and I don't think that's right. As much as I love open family radio, I donate to family radio, and I know how important it is to get the judgment day a message out, but please... Uh, excuse me, a, 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 excuse, me. Just, j excuse me, just a moment. If I did hang up on you, uh, I, I apologize for that, but but I do not recognize when you called or when I did that. But now, what is your question now? Abbott, you were going on and on, and you did not let me get what I wanted to say in. So this is what I wanted to say to share with listeners. What God opened my eyes to, and I'll be real quick, just please don't interrupt. Um, the, when he said, let there be light on the first day of the week, we know that that light is, is, is Christ because he's the light of the world. So when he, he resurrected, he, that was kind of like showing us the full illustration of that light. Um, because, you know, that he fulfilled everything. 
That was like he had completed giving us our resurrected bodies, even though it was done before the foundations of the uh, world. Excuse me, fun. what verse are you referring to? Our Sabbath. What Hello? verse are you referring to? Please help me. I am just trying to tell you what God opened my eyes to that I, uh, excuse I just want to share with Ex listeners. But, but quick. E excuse me, you made a quotation that sounded like it was from the Bible. You said that when God said something about uh, uh, opening the light or something, what verse are you referring to? You must have gotten that from the Bible someplace. Where did you find that in the Bible? Yeah, excuse me. I, I, you can, you can, you can bring any kind of an idea and and talk for a while about it, but it has no value unless we can tie it down. I'm not trying to shut you down. I'm trying to direct you so that you talk in a way that we are able to understand what you are speaking of. I'm sorry. It's a, it's a. I, 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 I want to be as kind as possible, but I, but I have to, I, we have to make sense of what, what, where we're going with our conversation. Oh my, our caller is gone. Shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello? Yes. I uh, thank you for taking my call. The verse you were looking for about the field is Matthew thirteen forty four. Oh, yes, that was Matthew. That was it. Ma Matthew. Let me read that verse. Thank you, sir. Uh, it was verse, uh, uh, the, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field, which a man hath found, he hideth, and for the joy thereof he goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. And we know from the uh, a verse up above that uh, it says that the field is the world. And... Uh, Thank you for bringing uh, that uh, verse to our attention. And shall we go to our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. If you will pray for me, how we know it? Shall we go to our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Yes, good night, Brother Campbell. Yes. Okay, for the callers that do not believe that May 21st, 2011 is the end, you should direct them to read Genesis 6 and 7 and also read Matthew 24 before they read Second Peter chapter 6 and 3. Well, thank you for that advice and maybe that, that will help somebody. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Uh, the response um, to someone who says, you know, can you be, say, a prostitute or whatever and, and be saved? I think the one thing that, that's, like, hard for me to accept with, with your answer is that, that that's a judgment that an individual is making about their own behavior. Since we know that even saved people, people within the Bible, say you can talk, talk about uh, Paul, who has essentially been told directly by God that he is saved, knows he continued to sin. It, it upset him, but he knew he continued to sin. It, it seems like um, to say something very blanket that someone who has a particular lifestyle which does something cannot be saved might not be um, a, a fair well, thing to do. Well, excuse me. Now, excuse me. Now, you're not asking a question. You are trying to teach something here. But the fact is that all mankind potentially can sin. Uh, but when we become a true believer, there's something that happens to us in our before we're saved, both in our soul and in our body, we lust after sin. And therefore, so easy to become a drunkard or a prostitute or a homosexual or a uh, a liar a cons uh, or a uh, or whatever. Uh, and uh, we all all kinds of sins are all around us and in our own lives frequently if we're not a child of God. But when we become saved, God puts a fear within us. We tremble before the Word of God. And when we fall into a sin, and you, and nobody can understand this unless they really 
uh, be, become a believer, a true believer. But when we commit a sin, even a small sin, like uh, an evil thought or a, a, a wrong thought or a, a, a whatever it is, it troubles us no end because we have violated the law of God and, and we can't continue in that. And although potentially or maybe all most of our life we were a prostitute or were a drunkard or whatever when we become saved we're not going to be a prostitute any longer it's alien to our new soul they our eternal soul which god has given us which we will never want to sin again now it may uh, we might fall into a sin momentarily but it'll be a trouble for us we will uh, read for example psalm 51 very carefully this was penned god gave these words to david after he had committed sin with uh, bathsheba and he was not a prostitute i mean he was not a uh, yes he was not a male prostitute nor was she a prostitute but they did they did commit fornication with each other and uh, and and uh, and look at how david writes uh, under the inspiration of the holy spirit as god is giving him the words to say we are, you read psalm 51 and you'll see the pathos the the sorrow of his heart and that's the way it should be, would be will be in the life of any true believer when we fall into sin but thank you for calling and sharing and shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hi, Mr. Harold. Can you go to Psalm 40, please? First uh, Samuel? Sa Psalm, Psalm. Psalms 40. Yes, and verse which seven. verse? I'm sorry? Psalm 40, verse 7. Psalm 40, verse 7. And there we read, Then said I, Lo, I come. In a volume of the book, it is written of me. Now, what is your question? Okay, uh, take a look on that word. It says volume of book. That volume of book, uh, is that referring to the scroll where they found the Dead Sea Scroll in 1947? No, the Dead Sea Scrolls, they were written by men, and they were not the Word of God. Although there was one scroll that was the book of Isaiah that was a, a very early copy of the book of Isaiah, but most of the scrolls had to do with various uh, um, rules of the Qumran uh, community that lived right there at that time or by the Dead Sea. Uh, and... Uh, 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 the, 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 we don't find the Bible except for, like I say, the, the unusual situation of the book of Isaiah. But uh, uh, that is not where we get the, the, the main parts of the Bible at all. Okay, thank you. Thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Maranatha. Uh, uh, Daniel twelve nine through thirteen. Daniel twelve nine. Let's look at that. Daniel twelve nine. We read. And he said, "Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed." till the time of the end. And many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily shall be taken away an abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh, to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days but go thy way till the end be for thou shalt 
rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Now, what is your question? I'm curious about the days and uh, was wondering if you could expound upon that. Wondering about the days, you mean the 1290 days? Both. And the 1335 days. The, the 1290 days, when we search the Bible, there's no reference anywhere in the Bible to 1290 days, that, or that approximates that in order to help us with that. But on the other hand, we do find in several places where a day can be considered as a year uh, and in finding explanation for a passage. And so when we, church, when we uh, uh, take that uh, clue from the Bible and make it 1290 years, which the Bible does permit, then we find that it fits perfectly in, uh, into the unfolding of God's salvation plan. There were exactly 1290 years from the time that Jacob came into, uh, came into, uh, Egypt, leaving the prom, leaving the promised land, the land of Canaan. And that was a, a, a terrible thing because all of the Israel left that promised land that was typifying the kingdom of God. It was like leaving the kingdom of God. And exactly 1290 years later, in the year 587 B.C., I think I have that memorized correctly, uh, was the time when, Israel, when Judah was, uh, the nation of Judah and Jerusalem were overthrown and destroyed. Uh, that was typifying the great tribulation that happened in that day. And then exactly two times, 1290 days, uh, in the year 1994, it marked another uh, uh, tremendous moment in the history of the kingdom of God because on that day, the uh, the wrath of God that had begun already uh, 2,300 days earlier on the churches and on the world as God installed Satan to rule, on that day, God again began to save people all over the world, a final, uh, a final uh, bringing in of the true believers, but the, he left the churches out, and so it was, it was uh, so that uh, there were uh, in the remaining 6,100 days that that would follow, there would uh, there would be nobody saved within the churches, and so it was the equivalent of like like. Uh, they are like Jacob going into Egypt or Jerusalem being forever destroyed in uh, in the nation of Judah. or And uh, so uh, that's where that 1290. Now the 1335 days is a totally different subject. It's very curious how God in one verse <laughs> and then in the next verse goes right to an altogether different subject. But when we search the Bible and search the Bible, we find it fits perfectly into the work of the Lord Jesus when he came to demonstrate how he paid for our sins. It begins on the day that he was announced by John the Baptist, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world and uh, was, was ceremonially uh, b baptized because he's demonstrating how he had it was the high priest also who had to uh, kill the lamb and and his work was completed on Pentecost day in AD 33 when uh, when uh, the Holy Spirit was poured out because Christ said uh, I have to go into heaven he told the disciples otherwise the Holy Spirit can't be poured out and that was the finality of his demonstration when he again uh, began to save people all, all all over the world at the beginning of the church age. And when we have worked through the timeline of history, we find that there were exactly 1,335 days from the time when he uh, was declared to be the Lamb of God until the day of Pentecost when 
the Holy Spirit was poured out. And again, it, it showed, it gave us encouragement, first of all, that the Bible is absolutely trustworthy. Oh my, how wonderful that is. Secondly, it gave us encouragement that God was opening our spiritual eyes and we were beginning to understand the timeline of history with greater and greater accuracy. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hi. Um, yes, how are you? Okay, you say God is coming. Not to make fun of you or nothing. You say God is coming May 21st, right? You say oh, God is coming. coming. That is what the Bible teaches, that May 21 will be the first day of the day of judgment. It will be the last day of, uh, of God's salvation plan being in evidence on the world, in the world anywhere. Okay, so if you come in that day, why don't you sign over all your money and, and stuff to me for, for May 22nd? Well, I, why why would I do that? The second day is the uh, that that's the day of judgment. It, it uh, there everything is going to be being destroyed. It's going to start out with a huge earthquake, and and uh, 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 why would why would why would we do such a crazy thing? What we just we have to use family radio right up until the last day we want to be faithful in declaring the, the this warning to the whole world and it takes all of our resources and then and then next then that then comes the end and uh, there's no more salvation plan so so let's not even worry about that at all but thank you for calling and sharing and shall we take our next call please welcome to open forum hello Yes. Um, how are you doing tonight? Um, I was calling. I have a question. Yes. You what is your that, question? Um, oh, yes. You said about the rapture. I was wondering. I have kids. So what will happen to the kids? Will they be caught up too? Or what will happen to your children? Well, it depends. If they have, if God has saved them, they will be raptured. If they are not saved, just like all the other people who are not saved, they will also be under the wrath of God. There's, uh, there, you're, you're either a true believer and are caught up to be with Christ, or you're not and you're going to suffer. Uh, and it could be that uh, a great many, uh, we know a great many people will die even on that first day, so they won't really suffer. Uh, because once you're dead, you never again have conscious existence. On the other hand, there will be people who will be alive the second day and then die, and then they're no longer suffering. And there will be people alive on the a hundredth day and uh, and suffering intensely, and then they die, and then they won't be suffering anymore. But uh, that's all in God's hand, how he's going to uh, do, do uh, deal that out with uh, with the people who are uh, on, in the day of judgment. That's not anything we control. Okay, so, I mean, I'm thinking that the kids, they will be innocent. My kids, they're like, they're two and four, so. Well, you know, the, what we want to be doing is we want to be praying for our children. Oh, Lord, is it possible? Have mercy upon our children. And we want to talk about these things to them because the gospel and the warning is for the whole human race, not for just the adults. It's also for our little children. They can understand uh, that uh, that God could bring this world to an end if God opens their eyes, and and uh, we uh, we should tell them that they should be pleading also that they might become a child of God before the end comes, and and uh, that's 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 what we ought to be talking about to them and 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 praying oh my praying pleading begging god is it possible that some of my children also might be saved before it's too late you're right you're yeah i, I can believe that 
And I also have another question. No, no, excuse um, me. We, I, 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 I would wish I could take your second question, but we have a, uh, so many people trying to call. It would not be fair to the others. Uh, so each one asks one question, and 30 days from now or longer, you, uh, if you can get through, you can ask another question. But this is only to accommodate so many people. But shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Good evening, uh, Mr. Camping. Uh, yeah, yes. I've always been interested in the uh, the story of Adam and Eve and, and the Garden of Eden. And one thing that always fascinates me is the uh, the tree of uh, of knowledge of good and evil. If the fruit of that tree would have fell on the ground and, let's say, an ant came along and ate the fruit, or maybe an animal, would that would that creature have the same kind of condemnation uh, forever as uh, mankind would have? That would, that's, just, that's my only question on that. Well, that, that, we can ask those kind of questions, but they don't help us in, in any way. Uh, uh, the fact is God gave the command that uh, you can eat, uh, eat of all the fruit, but not of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And whether that, uh, that uh, fruit whether it's an apple or a pear or a banana, we don't know what it was. But uh, if it was, if they picked it up off the ground and ate it, it would be the fruit of that tree. And 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 once Eve took of that fruit and ate of it, and then gave it to Adam and he ate of it. At that moment, they had rebelled against God, and the word of God declared. In the day you eat, you're going to die. And they did spiritually die. They, they, they lost their life in Christ, which they uh, had been created with, and, uh, and they became subject to physical death. And, uh, and, and that is they, because we all are in the bloodline of Adam. We all come from him. Uh, therefore, that applied to all of us. It's as if every single one of us was there at that time eating of that tree. But okay, that, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello, Mr. Camping. I, I noticed in your uh, your Bible studies that you pray before each study, and, and, and on the open forum you've never prayed. You never pray on the open forum before the beginning and the end of it. Uh, I was just wondering if you'd consider doing that before well, you Well, I have, I have, but I, 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 uh, I always pray, of course, a lot before I do the open forum, and I, pr I pray through the day. <laughs> For wisdom, I, I have to pray constantly because I don't trust me at all. Uh, but I, I also have a fear. I really have a fear that if I pray publicly, and I do uh, at times uh, when I do a Bible study, but if I pray publicly, I'm afraid that uh, I'm, I'm showing off how I pray, and I don't want to do that. That's be the prayer is between me and the Lord, finally. And so I have decided not to do that. But shall I have to say good night. <laughs>